what's up everybody? My name is Russ. Uh, RWG Research is my website if you'd like to check it out. So this is a Stan Myers update. Um, what have I been doing? I've been waiting and waiting and waiting. Lots of waiting, but I have been doing stuff in the meantime. Um, I told you guys a while back on my kind of my update video what was going on and the, the whole story. It was a really long video. <clears throat> Try to make this one a little shorter. Um, and get to the points. Waiting, waiting, waiting. So here's the deal. Um, we're going to start with the injector. All right. That's what this video was about, is really the injector and the bobbins and the wire and stuff like that. So originally, um, I showed you guys this, and Scott, my buddy Scott, hi Scott, uh, made this, and absolutely brilliant. Um, all of the necessary slots, pieces, holes, parts, everything is uh, in place. And basically, what I've been waiting on is a few different people trying to source out some ceramic making parts for me. Um, or for this, I should say. For us all. And I couldn't really find anything. Um, one one off prototypes be really expensive. A lot of the US companies, they, they would, didn't want to do it or they didn't have the precision to do it, which I don't quite understand. But they make this what they call my car M A C O R. There's a whole Google search of it. And basically what it is, is it's a machinable ceramic. All right? Um, that's what originally we were going to use. I think that's probably what we're going to do. But in the meantime, if you guys haven't seen, I built this 3D printer that's actually running right now. And interesting, interesting, can't say the word, interestingly enough, there we go. Uh, a little tired today, should be in bed, but had an opportunity to make a video. So uh, anyway, I decided to just try and print one. Let's see if I can get a better video shot here. Um, you'd be amazed at the precision that this thing prints off. Now I haven't cleaned this one up at all, so there's still just a few spots. But this is pretty much exactly how it came out. If I can get it to focus. There you go. And interestingly enough, this should fit right in here. Okay, and that should be pretty much flush with the back. And the tip should be pretty much flush with the tip. So I didn't actually clean this up. This came directly out of the printer just like this with a little bit of build up down here to support the little lips right here. Uh, that's exactly how it came off. So honestly, for temporarily testing this device, this would probably work. Um, I am probably going to go ahead and get the May car, May car, if I'm saying that correctly. Um, and Scott, the guy, I'm going to be sending this back to Scott to finish the nut and the back part, which actually I can make that one, but the nut. And I am probably going to send him the machinable ceramic and let him have a go. The precision work that this guy does is amazing. I mean, it's above what I even call quality. You know, my quality is pretty good. This stuff's ridiculous. It's off the charts. So I have full faith in Scott to be able to make those ceramic parts. So that's probably what I'm going to do. Art in Vegas, I know you mentioned you may donate a piece of that if you still have it. I haven't called you yet. I actually was going to call you a while back. Couldn't find the right information. So um, send me another email or something. Other than that, um, yeah, that's one part of this video. I did go ahead and temporarily drill this one out just a little bit to see how it would fit. Um, the front of this thing fits a little bit better because it's sanded down. Anyway, um, so that's what's up with the injector. I thought that was really brilliant that I printed these out and it worked fantastically. For temporary pur purposes, this cost about, I don't know, 50 cents in plastic. We make one, burn it up, stick a new one in, try it again. Um, cheap way of doing it because the ceramic parts pretty expensive um, anyway so next uh, there's an individual I told you I've been waiting waiting and waiting there's an individual he goes by the name of Electro that's all I'm gonna tell you because I don't know if he wants to be flooded with people so for now unless he wants me to I'll put maybe his YouTube in the uh, description but for now I'll leave it go with that he's the same individual that made the ceramic um, well, they're not ceramic, they are some other high quality material uh, quenching discs that we've tested. Same gentleman, um, 
I've been waiting for him. He was going to buy the stainless steel wire. He was going to buy a very big spool of it and share it. And I was going to let you guys know about it, and he was probably going to sell it pretty much at cost. Um, unfortunately, there's some bad news for that. One, he did get the wire. Two, he didn't get the quantity he was supposed to receive. Now, unfortunately, he doesn't have enough to sell any at all. So, I was hoping to give you guys the opportunity to buy this wire in small quantities. That isn't going to happen. But, about four, maybe three of us, four of us, maybe more. I don't know how many he actually got to talk to, but we were going to make him things and trade some for the wire. Um, he spent a lot of money on his wire, and he ended up getting 0.88 of a pound. So it's just enough for a few individuals, and that's it. So the original uh, Stan Myers wire that Don sent me, uh, which is actually on the other bobbin somewhere, um, the enamel on it is actually really, really brittle, and it's breaking off. And so we need to order some more to really do some real testing with the stainless steel wire. So now that he has it, um, a few of us traded a few things, uh, some bobbins, um, I don't know, a few other things, I don't even know what else, but I volunteered to make him some of these dreaded bobbins. These things are so dreaded. Fire Pinto has been working on 3D printing these things. He's actually doing a really, really cool job. He's actually got it. He could do it. Um, but here's what's interesting about these. Um, he wanted, um, Electro wanted a slip-in. So what I did is I cut the, the edge off one side, okay, and then 3D printed this slip-in. And basically what this allows is for you to wrap a primary on here, slide it in, take it out, exchange it, where mine is actually wrapped on top of the other stuff and it's very difficult. You have to unwrap everything and rewrap everything. It takes a lot of extra effort. So this is actually a really good idea. Good idea, Electro. Um, there's other reasons for it. Um, the other style bobbin has these slip-ins in it, but this style doesn't call for that, but that's what he wanted. So I machined these. He can have what he wants. So I'll show you how well this printer... Let me just show you really quick the printer. It's actually running right now. I'm actually on live. The live folks will see me in the background. I'm actually printing one of these a little bit smaller. And, um... Yeah, so there you go. Quick, brief view. Still got some more tweaking to do on that, actually. But, basically, this slip-in fits. It's got a little play on the inside and outside, but it's got a lip on the bottom. And this allows this thing to fit exactly inside there. Perfect. So you can actually pull this out. It fits so snug and perfect that it fits right up to the top where I measured and printed it to. And I'm going to make a little bitty tiny ring that actually fits on the inside to keep any play here. But you can see, I don't know if you can see that. See the little bit of play that's in between these two spots? If I put this on backwards, you can see the amount of play. Just a tiny bit of space in there. Now I'm actually printing out a thinner one. This is a little bit too thick. Um, this was the first test. I got a few more to print. I did a very light sanding on the inside and the outside was pretty much exact. Um, so when I draw the second one, I'll end up making it just barely different. Show you guys the, the gap here. The one I'm printing right now is actually a little thinner. but. You see the space down in there, and that's just enough to wrap a coil. And actually, I'm going to offset these a little bit different. But anyway, I thought that was pretty cool how well that that worked out. I was just simply amazed. I could have machined that little part, but it's very tedious, and if I break it, very just a little cut, a little too much, a little here, probably shot. So it's easier just to print that part, and voila. Um, okay. So there's a quick Stan Myers update. Uh, the other thing I wanted to tell you is on these pulse boxes. This is the rustic frequency generator designed after Stan's circuit, uh, modified by Kevin and me, Kevin Williamson and me. Um, basically, what I plan on doing uh, right now, I need to be able to add a gating um, 
duty along with the frequency. Now originally um, I made this 50% duty cycle exactly 50% that's what I wanted. From what I knew at the time that's what we wanted. Um, after doing more research, more people doing research and getting more information, um, I decided that gating frequency and uh, the duty cycle, excuse me, needs to be adjusted. Um, I have a very simple solution to adding a on this board for anybody that's already built this frequency generator. It'll be a breakout board that you just put somewhere, break one connection, add in that and the knob for it, and then the whole rest of the circuit should be fine. That's the plan. Um, it's basically exactly the same way the PPL stand, stands PPL circuit works. This one here, it's the same. It's the same way this circuit works, except um, as far as the the, the frequency gating uh, duty cycle. Um, it's pretty much similar, but I, I'm trying to work out a few details. I haven't had time to actually work on it, um, so that's the plan. Uh, yeah, that's it, I guess. Um, I know I haven't got very much done lately. I actually just finally got my basement pretty much complete. I'm trying to get the other room done so my kids have somewhere to play. So uh, the new one's really getting close to now, and then who knows what's going to happen time-wise. Still be doing stuff, but this stuff just takes a little bit more time than I used to just not sleep pretty much at all, and it's been burning me a hole, man. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, I think, I'm pretty sure, that I have footage of recording one of these. I believe it's already compressed and ready to go. So I will add that to the end of this video. But, um, well, yeah, I guess that's it. Uh, that's it. So there you go. Um, good uses for the 3D printer. Some people may have been asking themselves why I made that thing. One, uh, Nate and Jeff, they made me. And uh, two, it really does come in handy. Um, I've made a few other things already that's just, I wouldn't be able to make without it. Um, it, it some of the parts are very complex. So, uh, yeah. I'm going to let you guys go with that. Enough done talking. Peace out. Peace and love. Leave a comment. Um, one day at a time, guys. That's what it takes. Share the love. Help and be helped. You know, you guys encourage me. Hopefully my videos are encouraging to you guys. And for any of the naysayers out there, hi. See you. Got to do what you got to do. Life comes first. All right. Peace and love, you guys. Have a good day. Mwah. I don't know why I kiss you guys.